start out by just saying uh, uh, to the panel to take out your crystal balls, look 20 years in the future, and tell us what, uh, what this uh, power system is going to look like. Uh, Lynn, are we, are we all, are we going to end up in a truly distributed system where people are off the grid and uh, running off of your uh, uh, panels on the roof? We would love nothing more than to think 20 years out. <laughs> that would be such a luxury. As you know, we're, we're still here looking out one year to, uh, to see what happens with that investment tax credit. So it's a pleasure to take a, a moment from the, the daily, the day-to-day -day -day fighting to think a little more broadly. So, you know, I think what's undeniable is that consumers are wanting distributed energy and want clean energy and want solar. Um, you, you know, you see overwhelmingly across all political spectrum, all demographics, that people love choice. They love the right to power their own rooftops. And so that trend isn't going away. You know, you see companies like mine growing 100% year over year um, and, and continuing to, to expect that for the future. I think, you know, what that means certainly is that um, utilities have to adapt. I think what's happening in the relationship today between distributed energy companies and um, the utilities is, is similar in what happens in most disruption cycles, which is, you know, first you're sort of ignored, and that's what happened with us and with Solar City as we got off the ground starting in 2007. You know, people sort of thought of residential solar as this small, you know, hobbyist um, type market. Uh, I think then you see um, the natural reaction is to then to fight. Uh, and I think we're, we're you know, pretty, pretty deep in that, in that cycle right now where you see some battles with utilities and rooftop solar companies being played out across the country. Um, but then I think you see that utilities will, um, will, um, will become involved, will join. Do you think we're moving to a more distributed system? Do you think it's going to be a mix of, of concentrated and distributed? How do you see this playing out? What does have to happen is the grid's going to become much more dynamic. It's already happening. Load's going to become much more responsive. There's, we've had a grid that's been basically load as a given and then generation being deployed to meet that load. Uh, it's going to be much more of a two-way street. So you'll have much more interaction of load, more demand response, more intelligent systems uh, at the home to let you actually, and, and even uh, commercial and industrial users will be, uh, there'll be much more participation of megawatts, I think, uh, rather than peakers in how to get there because one thing that hasn't come up yet is you know, we do have to methodically decarbonize. And in order to do that, we need to bring on uh, a very broad combination of wind, solar, geothermal, hydro. You need a very large portfolio. And the grid has to be much more dynamic, more flexible, and you're not going to get away. And, and so your it. prediction for 20 years out of the, the decarbonization, <clears throat> where will we be? Well, let me paint two futures really quickly. One is if you actually have some, uh, bring that externality in somehow through a carbon tax or some mechanism, I'm not going to That's think not going to happen. So now move on to, to the other move option. to future number two. <laughs> uh, then it'll be one more that'll be more locally mandated, uh, which is more expensive. So we're going to have RPS and we're going to, or we're not going to decarbonize, right? But if we do decarbonize through mandates, you're going to have to have... Uh, you know, forcing uh, more renewables. You're not going to have as much participation from things like nuclear. Um, it'll be complicated. And uh, what, what's, but your, I think, what's your guess? Percentage renewables 20 years out. 20 years out. That's 2035. Globally or U.S. Well, we Just start US. with the U.S. Okay. Well, let's start with California. It's going yeah. to be, <laughs> it's going to be 50. Yeah, I mean, it will be 50. You literally, unequivocally. Yeah, well, California will make 50%, but it's part of a larger grid. So if you look at the Western grid, it won't be, I don't think it'll be 50% by then. So what is the utility going to, how, how, how do you change? What does it look like? Well, probably the first thing is you better get the lead out. It's going to change pretty quickly. And I think from our perspective, uh, if you look back at how the grid got built in the first place, it was really to deliver ubiquitous electric power. It was to make sure that it was going to be affordable and that, above all, it was going to be a reliable system. It was going to be there. That's the tough part of your job. Yeah. You have to do the reliable piece of it. And so I, I, I think we will move rapidly. I think there will be a lot of changes. The, to me, the centerpiece is the distribution system, as we call it, the, the small wires. It's what connects all the homes and businesses. Uh, the industry probably over the years has tended to think a little bit more about the bulk power system. How are you going to get big amounts of electricity uh, provided affordably and reliably? 
but increasingly, I think it'll flip around the other way where it's, it's that network, and I use that word uh, purposely, the network that will connect the homes and businesses that's going to be the centerpiece.